Hey there, folks. Today we've got a hot topic on our hand: self-driving cars. And let me tell you, the story about car accidents involving these autonomous vehicles are all over the place. For example, what happened on August the 12th this year? Lin Wenqing, a well-known Chinese entrepreneur, was driving new car and decided to test our the self-driving features. Well, it ended tragically with an accident, and Lin unfortunately lost his life. And don't forget about the Vimo, the American company that's been developing its own self-driving cars. From 2019 to 2020, they had a whopping 18 accidents. And when it comes to Tesla's autopilot model, things get even scarier. Since 2019, there have been a staggering 726 accidents in the U.S. related to Tesla's advanced driving assistance system. And sadly, 17 people lost their lives in those incidents. This fact makes you wonder, right? How far we really from reliable self-driving technology? Can we trust it? Well, let me break it down for you. Currently, most self-driving manufacturers are operating at level two, which means they can handle automatic parking and highway driving under human supervision. Tesla's full self-driving system might be considered level 2.5, since it can handle city driving with some human oversight. Elon Musk believes that the full autonomy level 4 will arrive within the next two years. But here's a reality check: companies working on level 4 technology are facing major challenges. And struggling to make that breakthrough,、uh-uh. so things aren't as optimistic as Elon Musk makes them sound. Some insiders even believe that it could make another 10 years for self-driving to become mainstream, if not longer. Well, as I know, a recent report from S&P Global Mobility suggests that achieving level five autonomous driving may not happen until after 2035 or even later. Talk about pouring cold water on the whole self-driving crazy rate. So now let's address some burning questions: How is self-driving technology really progressing? Why are major countries so invested in the development and the commercialization of autonomous vehicles, despite the risks involved? And who's winning the self-driving race between China and USA? Also, with the industry consistently evolving, what are the key areas worth paying attention to and investing in? Well, I'm Sheila Wang, and I'm here to keep you updated on the freshest business and investment news. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe my channel. And if you are hungry for more detailed investing report, make sure to check out that analysis report I've provided below. Now let's dive right in today's topic. Firstly, let's we make it clear what we mean by this whole level zero to level five. According to the SAE, the Society of Automotive Engineers, self-driving cars can be classified into six levels: level zero through level five.、Ooh. Now, from level zero, that means absolutely no autonomous assistant whatsoever. It's all up to us humans to handle the driving. Level one and level two, on the other hand, bring some driving assistance and partial automation. But humans still need to pay attention. When we hit level three and level four, we are talking about conditional automation, where the car can handle specific driving tasks on central roads, like highways. But here's the kicker, my friend. It's not until we reach level five that we're talking about the full-blown, no human-aided, fully autonomous driving. But let's face it: going from zero to one is a piece of cake compared to going from one to ten. Now let's zoom in on level three. This level of autonomy is critical turning point when it comes to assign safety responsibility. As you go down the levels, the driver remains in control and bears the responsibility. 
but as you move up the ladder, the car system takes over the driving controls. And guess what? The responsibility falls on the car manufacturers. And that's why news response to the recent accident I have mentioned in the front of video saying that Hey, this was our navigation pilot system, which you can think of as level 2 autonomy. It's not full self-driving, we will investigate this accident. Well, just heard about it, which is not a surprise. It's highly unlikely that consumers will be able to buy a truly driveless car before 2035. So, if self-driving is such a tough nut to crack, why are all those big countries crumbling to invest in research and development? Let's just take a look at China. The country's national industry fund has put a ton of resources into the field, achieving a concentrated breakthrough in an industry. It's a lot like what we saw with development of electronic vehicle industry. Just in the first half of this year, China's relevant departments and local governments rolled out nearly 30 policies and regulations related to the self-driving industry. And in July, the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology along with the National Standardization Management Committee revised and issued the guidelines for the construction of the National Industry Standard System. These rapid-fire policy implementations have effectively supported industry's development. Now, let's hand across the pound to the USA. They've been pushing self-driving development since early 2000s. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency kicked things off by supporting and promoting long-distance autonomous vehicle compensation which proved the way for the world's first driving road testing company, Google X. Since then, the U.S. federal government have released several policies that guidelines like the Federal Automated Vehicle Policies and Autonomous Vehicle Legislative Online, as well as the Intelligent Transportation System Strategic Plan and the Comprehensive Plan for the Autonomous Vehicles. These policies not only provide guidance for the standardization in the self-driving world, but more importantly, they encourage the technological innovation. With backing of these policies, Waymo launched its self-driving taxis in Phoenix and San Francisco. While another top-notch self-driving company, Cruise, got a green light to offer self-driving taxi services to the public in San Francisco. Now, both China and the US have a strong thing in the self-driving game because to them, this technology is a game changer. According to Professor Yang Diange from Tsinghua University puts it, if someone gains control over autonomous vehicles, they essentially have a weapon in their hands. Just think about it, folks. China now have around 300 million cars on the road. If someone were to hack into that system, those 300 million cars would become 300 million weapons. That's why autonomous driving technology is of paramount importance to them. So, no matter how challenging or costly it may be, they're gonna go all in it. Well, here we move to another question, really important. Why it's so difficult to make self-driving into reality? Well, let me break it down for you. The first hurdle is perception. The whole value of autonomous driving technology relies heavily on perception. And guess what? It's not a work in the park. The darn thing can be easily mistake humans for road signs or confuse trucks because, let's face it, truck bus come in all shapes and sizes. And that leads to a whole lot of face alarms. And don't forget that random objects like plastic bags, cardboard boxes, or massive potholes. And there's no easy solution for those random situations yet. We can't possibly create a network to identify every single thing in the encyclopedias, friends. Next up, we've got a positioning problem. Updating maps is a forever problem. Those high perception maps only get updated every few months, which means they can't keep up with ever-changing road conditions. And let's not forget about computing challenge. 
the amount of calculations and data processing involved in mind-boggling. Huawei once estimated that reaching level for autonomous driving could require at least a billion kilometers of road testing. That's like a million cars driving 10 hours for a whole year. And guess what? It ain't cheap. Xiaopeng models fill the base, revealing that their annual computing expenses exceed a whopping 1 billion yuan. The computing demands of domestic self-driving companies have been doubling in the past couple of years. So car manufacturers are starting to realize it's better to team up with cloud service providers than to go at it alone. Strengthen in members, folks. However, even the technology reaches its peak, cost becomes a massive issue. Current self-driving tech can handle about 95% of driving scenarios. But that remains 5%. Those edge cases or corner cases are the ones that haven't been properly learned. Identifying a new corner case requires collecting thousands of samples and spending weeks. And theoretically speaking, to achieve full-fledged self-driving, you'd need to accumulate a staggering 10 billion kilometers of road testing data. Talk about the costs and the time constraints that are off the chart. Last but not the least, we've got a policy-making challenge. Many laws and regulations regarding self-driving are still a work in progress. Privacy protection guidelines for autonomous driving are yet to be established and insurance liability standards are still up in the air. All of those factors will affect the implementation of self-driving. And let's not forget about the trust of the consumers. Since autonomous driving is a whole new board game, people haven't fully experienced its convenience and safety. So folks, self-driving still has a long way to go before it becomes a reality. Let's dive into the future of self-driving. Buckle up and get ready for some wider speculation. We are talking about a kingdom ruled by computing power and massive car models. Tesla stock have been holding strong lately, as we saw. And a big part of that is thanks to their Dojo supercomputer. Morgan Stanley drew up a grand vision saying Dojo could be valued at over 500 billions. But what the heck is Dojo? Well, it's Tesla's AI computing infrastructure for autonomous driving. Developing self-driving technology requires collecting billions of uh, kilometers worth of driving data and training those optimization algorithms. As you move up the level, like reaching level 4 to level 5, the demand for data and computing power skyrockets. It reminds me of the biggest cloud service provider in the world, Amazon Web Service, AWS. Back in the day, Amazon had a suppliers of servers served for their e-commerce business and the Black Friday shopping frenzy. They ended up selling that idle computing power. Today, AWS contributes a whopping 70% of Amazon's net profits. Wow, that's amazing, right? Surpassing their retail business. So could it be possible that Dojo is Tesla's own AWS? If Tesla starts offering computing power, self-driving tech, visually algorithms, and AI capabilities to the world, they could create an ecosystem even more valuable than just a car. So that's why Morgan Stanley wrote, Dojo gives Tesla an asymmetric advantage in a $10 trillion self-driving field. So now, car manufacturers are starting to realize that it's better to team up with cloud service providers than go at it alone. In China, you've got big players like Huawei Cloud, Alibaba Cloud, Baidu Cloud, and other jumping into the automotive cloud business. With the larger markets, tightly connected supply chain, and countless developers join the game. Of course, China has every reason to build a massive automotive cloud with top-notch self-driving technology. Well, lastly, I'd like to quote from Oppenheimer. It's not a new weapon, it's a new world. Perhaps in the face of big models, we should also see it's not a new tech, it's a new world.
this new world that is coming, whether you call it a fourth industrial revolution or the intelligent revolution, everything will be changed by AI. Just like reopening the world, the technology we seek must be disruptive innovation that breaks original pattern and brings the certainty of new growth. It must be the one that helps ordinary people to cross the gap rather than deepen the barriers. As for company that can cross the chasm will be born, the company that can benefit thousands of industries will be strong. Well, my friend, the gears of destiny has tuned with a band.